this is the open load dynamics and here this term uh, remember that the argument is replaced here by qd because it's coming from the yd theta term so we add and subtract yd theta term so this is from the minus yd theta term as long as this 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 and this okay so these four terms are coming from one minus yd theta so let's first take care of this part okay these two terms and next these two terms so in the first term it's equal to the intention here is to replace the e dot and p dot by these signals okay. this term is this term this term the minus k e dot is this is e dot okay and this is p dot we replace whatever dot terms because the e dot term is not measurable so we need to replace e dot by that signals and eventually you can find that this can be reorganized as this no upper bound you just substitute the parameter the, the filters e dot p dot and you got these signals so it equals to okay, this is e dot this is p dot it's derived it's based on the p filters okay it's this, this from the definition of p filter p dot equal to this okay and next you can cancel out some terms okay for example so you can this term and this term will be cancel out this term and M E and this term, okay. The M E term will be cancelled out. And second, this term M E F K P and P is equal to P is equal to EF plus KE. Okay. So let me write down this term down here. becomes just k okay second term m e f will cancel out the another m e f here okay and third k e f this m k square e will cancel out the um m k square e okay okay so r m k e e f k e minus mke plus mke okay kef okay okay that becomes r ef r minus ef mkr M E F M E F okay and this term cancel out um, this term K 
Okay. So then you got KR. Okay. Minus KR and this term minus MK KF. Okay. And that's the last equation of equation three. M E F. Uh, okay, 那就小错了。那应该是这个 two 跟这一个，对不对？ Okay. So this is the first term. Okay, we regroup. We um, substitute the, the, the designed filter and cancel out the, the, the terms and that it will boil down the whole law equation down to this simple form, which has only four terms. So next is number two. This, this equation equals to Vm Q. Um, we can so this Q is equal to Q dot minus R plus E plus EF based on the definition of the separate this and this segregate this so we can write down This is using a switching property. Switching property, which is the M A B times C equal to B M A C B. You can swap these two variables. They will be equal. <coughs> so I can swap these two, this and this, okay, and segregate. Once this term is outside the bracket, I can segregate this term and these terms. Okay, so that's equal to Vm Q Q D dot plus Q D dot minus vm q q d dot okay and uh, and all these terms minus r plus e plus e f <coughs> okay is same as these terms So the reason to segregate using the region property and segregate this term into these two terms is we can combine this term and this term because it's QD here, but here is Q. Okay. So once you put the two terms together, the difference is Q, QD here, you can upper bound this. You can upper bound this by um, by the properties. So if I call if I call this is uh, uh, D, okay, and D norm can be upper bounded by <coughs> C one Z norm, okay. 
and z is defined as e e f r. Okay. So that's the reason we put the two terms together. We do all this work to put these two terms together. Okay. And this term can be the norm of this term can be upper bounded by C two Z again. So the reason for this to be true is because by using the property, the bound, we mentioned this before, which is the norm of Vm Q Q dot. The norm of this can be upper bounded by a constant pi Q dot. Okay. And for this, okay, which means that for Vm Q Q D dot, okay, Q D dot, that can be upper bounded by some C M and Q D dot, right? which is a constant, which this is a non-desired velocity, right? And it's another constant. So which means it can be upper bounded by C2, another constant. Okay, so the norm of this can be upper bounded by C2, by a constant, and this can be upper bounded by the Z norm. So the product of these two can be upper bounded by C2 times the Z norm, okay? And this term, okay, okay, the norm of this can be upper bounded by C three Z norm plus C four Z norm square. Okay. And that's because by using the three string properties and the bound of Vm you can obtain this upper bound, okay? So for detail, you can check out the, the notes. Then, if or after all this has been done, we can do the stability analysis. Until you do the stability analysis, you will understand, or you will be clear to see why we do all this process to upper bound the terms by, by Z norms or by Z norm square. So eventually, all, after all that has been done, the R P transpose M R will be. This is the close to dynamics, right? And this can be further R per bounded by C five. as the value of r times norm z plus c6, another constant, and z norm square. Then we do a stability analysis.
and you tell a time derivative, and here you can substitute the Carlos Blue dynamics, which is a transpose MR dot. And this M dot is coming from the time derivative of these terms. So E dot is, by definition, E dot is equal to this, which is coming from the definition of R. And this is coming from the definition of E dot, or P filter. Okay? This term can be canceled out by the VMR term. This term can be canceled out by the skew symmetric property. So this term, and this, so this term is coming from the causal dynamics here. So by design the controller tau here, you see that minus K, E, F, and E. There are three terms. The first term is for feedback. Second term is for the cross terms. The third term is coming from adaptive control, trying to approximate the unknown parameters and unknown dynamics in the, in the system. And K is designed as this constant. See that dot is this. And remember that R, what is R? R is by definition is this, right? And remember that for E dot, E dot is not measurable. E dot is the difference between Q dot and QD dot. So Q dot is not measurable. So R is unknown. And if R is unknown, how you can implement this? Because R is unknown. So you will see the head dot is unknown. Basically, it's hard to estimate theta hat by its dynamics because dynamics is unknown. It still can do that, and the approach is called integration by part, fen bu ji fen. So, for example, let's define another signal tau. Okay, tau is the variable for the integration of theta hat dot, and it is from zero to t, and you use the integration by part, you segregate one term into two terms using this, similar to this integration by part. Then you can find that even if you don't know E dot in, in R, you still can do the integration. So, theta hat is known, theta hat can be done. So all these signals in the control input is known, okay? And you substitute that control into the into here, and you can further upper bound the v dot by these terms. Okay, so if you look at the first three terms, it's negative definite, right? But now you have two more terms to deal with. You can do this by Young by upper bound, this by Young's inequality. This can be upper bound by C5 times square plus Z naught square okay, divided by 2. Okay, so this upper bound by this we call it Young's inequality. So from here, if you don't use Young's inequality, if you don't use Young's inequality, you can't do anything with it. You, can, you cannot do anything about these terms. You don't know how to suppress this term or remove this term from V dot. But after you use Young's inequality, now it becomes R squared term, Z squared terms, right? So, Substitute this back to the this v dot. So it combine combine. You have r square term. You have r square term here. Here's minus. Here's plus. You can combine the two. Okay, you can combine the two, which is c m minus c two over two r square. Okay. So as long as k times cm is greater than um, the half of c2, that still be a negative. It still be negative, right? Okay. So we say if this is greater than one, is greater than one, 
that you can further upper bound these three terms by minus z norm square because z again by definition z is the combination of the three signals three per three states okay and z norm means e square plus e f square plus r square e square e f square r square okay and as long as it's greater than one it can be upper bounded by this okay and you have another two terms z square and z power to the fourth okay so that can be uh, further upper bounded by 1 Kn is coming from the control gain K, okay, from page four, the bottom of, bottom of page four, okay. So what does this mean? What does this mean? Is it global condition or is it semi-global condition? Semi-global, right? Z, Z now is the state, right? And for this function to be negative definite, this part has to be positive, right? For this to be positive, you need to make sure the summation of these two is smaller than one, okay? And there's two ways. One, you increase Kn, so that this summation of these two will be become smaller, right? Another one is you fix k fix k n you increase z. Well, z is the state. You cannot you don't know where z can be, right? What you can do is you sh make sure that the initial constitution of z is smaller such that com the summation of this is smaller than one. In other words, the conclusion is you need to, given the condition, initial condition, okay, z, zero, you need to select your kn until it greater to a point that the whole bracket is positive. Okay, so this is semi global. The condition, the control condition, the gain condition is depend, it depends on the initial condition of z. Okay depend on the initial condition of z, which is the state. And go on. Okay, so that's semi-global asymptotic tracking. It's semi-global. Asymptotic tracking, okay, or asymptotic stability. And here's another very important, very important question. Okay, why, if the initial condition, given the initial condition z zero, okay, which means given the z e zero, e f zero, r zero, given all the initial conditions, why? Let. And you can select the control gain k n right large enough to ensure this is positive. Okay. So that means that V dot will be negative, semi-definite, because you have theta here. You have theta here, right? So it's, it's still negative, semi-definite, right? But once you select the gain as high as possible, it becomes negative, semi-definite. Can you make sure that Z won't increase again? Can you? Wait a minute. If you get the initial condition of Z zero, and you select the Again, large enough. That means that V will not increase, right? V only decrease. Does that mean once V decrease, 
Does that imply Z normal will still increase? If V decreases, right? Because as long as it's negative semi-definite, V will decrease, right? And we want to make sure that the initial condition of Z is the largest one compared to a long time history, right? Otherwise, the summation of the bracket might not be positive, right? If it increases from the initial condition, the condition might break, right? It, it might not be positive for all time, right? Do that. So you need to, in other words, you need to make sure the initial condition is the largest Z, right? Otherwise, this might not no longer be positive. So to make sure Z will decrease from the initial condition, it seems that V at least, not a sufficient condition, but Z, but V had to decrease. Right? Right? But even V decrease, they don't imply Z decrease. So it's kind of chicken and egg problem, right? But if it's negative definite, it's possible. For negative semi-definite, it's hard to say because your V not only contains the Z terms, but also contain another term which you don't know the value at the initial condition, right? To be honest, I only use once the P filter in my research. But it's important that if you not the already states is measurable, keep double dot is not measurable. It's, it's a good approach, good candidate tool to use. So it's very practical. It can be used to deal with any practical case. Inertia, we don't know Vm, we don't know G, we don't know F. You still can get semi-global uh, synthetic tracking, and semi-global means that you, if you were, you know your initial conditions, then you know how to select your gains. Initial condition depend uh, means the tracking air, right? If your initial condition of the states is a far from is far from the desired trajectories, your tracking air will be larger. Right, that means you need a higher gain to ensure stability. As I say, there's another approach called the global decal. Decal is global stability. That means that it doesn't require your gain. The gain doesn't depend on the initial condition of your states. The approach is very similar to the semi-global case, except we need to redesign the P filter. Okay. So the objective is the same. We want to do tracking control. Q and the tracking error are measurable. And the system parameter M, all these are unknown. Okay, We use the same property. And this is new because we redesign the P filter by this part. Okay, Before, it was R equal to E dot plus E plus EF. Now we replace E by tangent H E, 10 H E F, okay? Because 10 H E can be upper bounded by one. 10, 10 H E F can also upper bounded by one. H function, I think, is, for example, X, X, it's like this. Okay, so it's upper bounded by one. We just replace these two, E by 10 H E and same as for E F. And um, the F star is changed to this, okay? And we put that into the analysis. So in the open loop dynamics, we take the e R dot, and by definition, that's E double dot times E plus 10 H E dot, 10 H E F dot. Okay, and that that's equal to this. Okay, the time derivative of these two parts equal to this terms marked in red. Okay, so the procedure is pretty similar. Okay, and uh, and follow the same procedure. Okay, we 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 take take care of each term one by one 
and eventually in the Diablo function, you design, you redesign your Diablo function by replacing these two terms. Those two are PD functions. The minimum value of this is zero. So it's a, it's a positive definite function, same as this. And it takes a time derivative on V, you substitute the cross root dynamics. Regrouping the terms and you design the torque by this. Okay? And you select the control gain by this, adaptive low, and eventually you will see that this part, the gain, the selection of the gains doesn't depend on your initial conditions. Right. Here it just says that you need to select your Kn greater than one over four, greater than a quarter, a quarter, then it's fine. Then the V dot will be negative semi-definite. So they can achieve global asymptotic tracking. I think any of you play baseball, right? Or you, you know the rule of baseball, right? And usually the they will use laser gun to detect the speed of the picture, right? The, the ball from coming from the picture, right? They were so the sensor, that it, does it, you can consider the laser gun as a sensor that detects the speed of the, the ball, right? The baseball. But can it measure the position given any time step? Can it? No. Right. In the case, the measurable term is velocity, not position. Okay. But in control, if you want to do control, um, usually in you need state, you, you need position error, velocity error, right? Acceleration error, not necessary. Just position error or velocity error, right? But you know. The, but only the measurement only knows the velocity measurement, but it doesn't know the position measurement. So can you use the measurable terms to estimate the non-measurable terms? That's required for control. Can you? If you don't, you can use uh, this approach. But this approach is only for all the Lagrangian systems, which is this structure, okay? And again, the constraint here, we don't know the parameters. We don't know what's the inertia of the robot manipulator. We don't know the viscosity, we don't know the gravity. But you still can do attain the global asymptotic tracking okay, using this approach. But it takes a lot of designs in the P filters, so it can cancel out the terms. As I said, Q dot is not measurable. So in here, E dot is also not measurable. That's why we replace E dot by another terms. And those terms for example, R, R can be canceled out by, by some other dynamics or be considered as a cross terms. If you don't replace E dot, there's no hope that the subsequent analysis can cancel this out. It might remain there. You don't have a way to deal with it. Another example is, so in here, right? You replace E dot P dot by E dot P dot, and eventually you can cancel out four terms, and that give you this form. The, the analysis is related to what the constraint of the dynamics is. The norm of these two terms can upper bound by the error signal, the z norm, which is z norm, okay? Or z square norms, which is this and this. And we know that's are better than just e dot, because this can be canceled out by minus z terms. They can be canceled out by these minus z square terms. And remember, all these terms, which are bad terms, is coming from the V dynamics or the unknown dynamics. Okay, so we deal with the unknown dynamics by the control, the feedback, or the design filters. The analysis is it doesn't come from nowhere. Methodology is based on the constraints, okay, by the assumptions of the systems, the properties, the upper bounds. So all these properties will be reused in the analysis. All these upper bounds. This skew symmetry can be uh, used to cancel all the m dot terms, right? Switching property can be used to switching terms 
such that you can upper bound the terms by the norm square. And the upper bound of Vm terms can create constant terms if Q dot is Qd dot. Here is Qd dot, and that means Vm term can be upper bound by a constant. So all these properties have been used again and again in the analysis. So you just need to know when, which tool you need to use given the dynamics. The next will be artificial neural network because we use that in the nonlinear control. We use neural network to approximate the unknown nonlinear functions. And that's different from what have been very popular right now, the topics, popular topics, the AI. It's different. In the nonlinear control have been exist for almost 10, 20 years. And that's different from what's popular, recently very popular topics. If you have a uh, link that have been connected by two free free frictionless joint, the force applied on the link is called two force member, right? And the force, the external force on this link. has to pass has to pass the joint so that and there's no torque can apply on the link just force and the force has to pass through the two joint why torque 那没有透过，但又受力，力必须通过那个，对不对？力力不通过两个joint，它就会有旋转，会有torque嘛，对不对？So by observation is static, right? Static, which means that there is no torque, or the summation of the torque is equal to zero, right? But it's frictionless. The joint is frictionless, so there is no external torque. The only potential torque might come from the two force. Right. For example, your force is here. Your force is here. Then you have a, a distance or mismatch between the two joints that can generate torque. But it's static. There's no external torque, which means that the force, the two force, has passed through, has to be in mind. Linear, right? So that's the definition of two force member. We will talk. So this paper was about 20 years ago by Frank Lurus. He's a famous guy, especially in Ultima control. So he proposed this artificial neural network ideas in the control. Okay. So this is the structure. So artificial in it's not a new topic from today. It has been exist in decades. But recently, because of AI, it become popular again. But the, the basic functionality of a network is the same. The difference is how many hidden layers, how many neurons you use in your application, and how you do the learning. If you know the fundamentals, which our taught today, it will be sufficient for you to know how you operate, how you can use this neural network to approximate a nonlinear functions. In fact, you cannot approximate the combination of linear functions only can approximate a nonlinear functions. There is no way that a combination of linear functions can approximate nonlinear functions. So for example, um, If you, anyone heard about Heider series, right? And this can be a nonlinear function, f can be a nonlinear function, right? But usually in the analysis for simplicity, we just say we, um, we negate the high, high order terms. We only consider linear terms and some constant terms. So for a small deviation around, around for a wrong upper way, a wrong around x, right? 
if you do, you want to approximate a function around some point, you can say, you can do, you can negate the higher order terms. Okay, there Because, given, given a nonlinear function, okay, it's nonlinear, right? If you want to approximate a function in this, in this point, you can consider it's linear, right? You can consider it's linear. That's why we negate the higher order terms because the x is around this point. Okay. Although you can use the whole series to approximate the function across the whole domain. So linear functions can only approximate a linear function. And in this case, a linear function is in this compact small area, okay, in this area. And for a new one, but if you want to approximate the nonlinear functions, the whole nonlinear function, you can use either series or you can use neural network. But remember, the take the takeaway is you cannot use a linear function to approximate a linear function. That doesn't happen. Okay. It can. This is nonlinear function, so you can approximate it by if you don't negate the higher order terms, you can approximate nonlinear functions. Okay. If you only keep the high, high order terms because they are nonlinear. So the next question is why we can use neural network to approximate nonlinear functions. So we need to do into the detail of neural networks. Okay. So this artificial neural network have input. Okay. Let's say input x1, x2, x for example, if you have a state x1, x2, x3, position, velocity, and acceleration, for example, okay, the input will be three dimension, okay, and you have output maybe just again three dimension or one dimension. It doesn't matter how many, what the dimension is, okay, you want u2. Or maybe not you, just y for for in general. Okay. And you want to use this black box. To approximate nonlinear function. The nonlinear function is f x equal to y. X. Okay, y one, y two, x one, two, three. Okay. Nonlinear function. This layer is called hidden layer, okay. Which is inside the neural network. It's called hidden layer. So in this case, we have one hidden layer, okay. Hidden layer. And usually we use two hidden layers. In the in the nonlinear control. Okay. And in each hidden hidden layer, we call it a neuron. This is a neuron. And 
a neuron is connected to each input okay given each input will, will send its value into the neurons okay and um, the reason that you can do nonlinear approximation is the neuron you can consider as a small function that during nonlinear operation okay because each neuron has a, a, a activation function that is x and sigma s is called activation function can be this is one of the function you can use okay e x e x minus x okay or some other functions like uh, this is one type of activation function you can, there are many types you can select okay but this is one of them but the requirement is it has to be a nonlinear function okay it has to be a nonlinear function okay so what this neuron do is or it can be this okay okay this or this or etc as long as it, as long as long as it's nonlinear so what this neuron do is it takes the input x which could be x1, x2, x3 okay and generate and generate a function maps from R in to R okay n is the dimension of x and in, in this case is R3 the input dimension is 3 output is 1 okay and the output will also connect it to every neurons okay so you can consider that the three input coming to here is a is a combination and in each in each link there will, will be a waiting W1, W2 W11, W12 W13 okay so the input X1 times W1 1 plus x2 times w12 plus w3x13 will be the input to these neurons the linear combination of x and the weightings will be the, become the input of, to the neurons and that generate an output to the next hidden layers they also come with w2 1 w3 another W so maybe we call it uh, so we use V V V we use W here okay so here we are doing linear combination here we are doing nonlinear operations okay so the output of this is a combination so that's why we can use this to do nonlinear approximation. You cannot use a combination of linear functions to approximate a nonlinear function. So you need to do some nonlinear operations. Let's happen in the neurons. In each neuron, there is an offset theta. Here we call it theta j. Okay, theta vj. 
So you can consider this neuron have has four inputs. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is an offset, which is a constant. So eventually, you can write down the whole function. This is the output from the neural network. Why? Look at the output here. Input is x. So input times the weightings, which is the weight on the link. Okay, that's the linear combination, right? All this is a linear combination plus the offset. Okay, all this is the input to the activation function. Okay, so the output of this activation function will be nonlinear. Okay, and you tag the output of this function to do the linear combination with W2, which is the weighting on the second layer. Okay, and do the nonlinear approximation. Here we only have one hidden layer. Okay, sorry, just one hidden layer. So you can formulate this new network as that. Okay? This is a black box. So all these weighting V and W V and W are the unknown constants that you need to update, same, similar to the adaptive control, you need to update the theta hat, right? Theta hat is the unknown con is used to approximate the, the unknown constant, right? V and W are like the theta hat. We used to approximate the true value of V and W, right? Once you can approximate the true va value of V and W, you can Almost approximate the nonlinear function. We haven't, haven't touched uh, how we can use neural network to do control. Okay, we just introduced the neural network and its functionalities, which is you can use it to approximate nonlinear functions. So, for example, the input to this neuron is this is the input. And the, the, that's the input to the neuron. And what the neuron do is it tell the input to generate output x. Uh, so you took that will be you substitute this into here. Minus all this guy, okay. They will give you output, right? The output is this, okay. And the output will we will come to the input after they multiply by the weightings, okay. That's why you see W is behind. Be, Beside the sigma, okay. I say in here I is one, one, one sigma. Okay, all this guy here. That goes to the output y, okay, y one, y one, and y one is a collection of outputs from different neurons to that. So they plus, this is from another neuron. So we should label this by whatever. This is not label, now I just not label. This is from first neuron. This is W12 plus W13, um, one, three. One, two, three. W one and 
depend on how many neurons you have. Okay, depend on how many on okay on minus one on. If you look at compare this to this, this is the same. Okay. So if you have two inputs, then you will have Y2 here and follow the same procedure, change W21, W22, W23, okay? So eventually, we can write down this into a simpler form, which is this. Okay, this equation four is equal to equation one. And remember that this is the neural network, right? Artificial neural network. It can approximate a nonlinear function f. Okay, it, can, it can be used to approximate a nonlinear function f with a small approximate, approximation error. Okay, it always exists, which means that you cannot 100% approximate, use neural network to approximate a nonlinear function. You can only, or, or only guarantee that the approximation will be close and close, but never be the same. That's a very important assumption. So epsilon is called, th this is called the approximation error, okay? It always exists.